Good morning, Church of Renton. So it's so nice to be with you today. Again, another Sunday, May 24th, a time when we will get together to praise the name of the Lord. Tomorrow will be Memorial Day and will be a nice time to celebrate uh, the life of those who gave their lives for the freedom that we enjoy in this country. Welcome, family rental core. Welcome, family. Welcome, friends. Everybody, welcome. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Oh Lord, what a privilege we have to get in with you this morning and with our brothers and sisters, Lord, across this screen. We pray that your blessings and your Holy Spirit will touch them, will touch us as we worship you this morning. And we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit and we pray that in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's read the Bible verses that is um, Ephesians 6, the verses 10 to 12. They says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put it on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the, dev the devil's shames. For our struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Would you uh, join us in worship at this time? Let us praise the name of the Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to sing some songs. Why don't you join with us? Um, the first one is, He Has Made Me Glad. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. sang this song with you last week. It's called Morning and the Dancing, and it goes like this. Where there once was only hurt, he gave his healing hand. Where there once was only pain, he brought comfort like a friend. And I feel the sweetness of his love piercing my darkness. And I see the bright and morning sun as it ushers in his joyful gladness. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent, I must sing for his joy has come.
with a bright and morning sun as it ushers in his joyful gladness he's turned my morning into dancing again he's left in my sorrows i can't stay silent i must sing for his joy has come so he's turned my morning he's turned my morning Hopefully that's your testimony, that uh, whatever sort of pain or suffering you're going through, that God has turned your morning into dancing. The next song is, All to Jesus I Surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. In His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. that we have in there uh, which is that Barbara and Roy are doing well she took his her stitches out and Roy is doing well on his exam he's feeling much better so everything we praise the name of the Lord we have been praying for their recovery and let us pray for our core family because we miss each other certainly and it, it we don't see a time we just want this to go away we long to see you soon so uh, we want to remain re, uh, remember that dad will have his uh, surgery soon it's a, a heart surgery and we want to continue lifting up Tad in our prayers please remember that as we pray in your time let's pray for the salvation army staff and volunteers our clients that uh, reach us at the food bank uh, lately and also we have a prayer for the uh, people that uh, is uh, coming affected by the coronavirus and their families. And of course, we need the mercy of the Lord uh, over our world. Uh, would you uh, pray with me? Do you agree with that? Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we start this prayer today with or words of thanksgiving, Lord, for you have blessed Barb and Roy. We thank you for 
Lord, your mighty hand, your healing hand over their lives, Lord. We pray for the Salvation Army Church, our church family, Lord, so afar from each other these days. Lord, we long to see each other. We pray that this uh, pandemic situation will go away soon. We're praying, Lord, also for all those who are sick. We pray for our staff and volunteers, Lord, and for this world that is being affected by this pandemic. Lord, bless us. Bless your army. Bless us as we worship you today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So we uh, are at this uh, time of worship where we uh, uh, praise the Lord and honor him with our tithes and offering um, and your donations and gifts as well. If you haven't uh, done so, I uh, go ahead and click the link if you want to give it online, which is tithe.ly, okay? Um, I'll have the description down over here. If you're on YouTube, it will be down in the description uh, box. If you're in uh, Facebook, it'll be in the comment section below, okay? Um, if you'd like to give it that way, go ahead and do that. But if you like uh, the uh, more of the uh, old-fashioned, um, a lot of people like it. And to tell you the truth, I, I actually like to write a, a check as well. Um, you can go ahead and mail your check to the Salvation Army of Renton, okay? P.O. Box 977, Renton, Washington, 98057, okay? Um, and uh, let us pray for the uh, tithe and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything you've done for us, for um, all the little and, and mighty uh, mighty things that you've done for our lives and just for having um, a, a, a being a life here uh, today. It's just a blessing to be here. Uh, Father, continue helping us, blessing us, giving us wisdom, uh, discernment to, to know and do what's right, Father. Help uh, us as um, a church and as a, an army of God to to um, use the resources that uh, are given to us to help others to reach out to these lives and change them and transform them, Father, and help us to touch these lives uh, um, with your uh, spirit is what we pray for in your sin, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we will go to the Word of God at this point. Um, Remember that tomorrow will be Memorial Day and we will be celebrating the life of those and remembering the life of those who um, gave their lives for the freedom that we enjoy in the country. And based on that, I select a portion from the scriptures that is in the book of Daniel chapter 5 verses 1 to 31. It, it's kind of a long reading. But because it's very important, I would like to ask you to hold on with me. Let us read it through. It's a very important message today as we uh, will be uh, sharing this uh, uh, very important uh, time in, in, the, in the history of this country. Uh, Daniel chapter 1 verses uh, 1 to 31. The Word of God says, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. The king summoned his enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. Uh, then they said to those wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck, and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. 
Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So the king Belshazzar became even terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. The queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the bank banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him as chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. He did this because Daniel, whom uh, the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So Daniel was brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and the enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations uh, and to solve difficult problems. And if you can read this writing and tell me what it means, I will, you will be clothed in purple and have a golden chain placed around your neck, and you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards, rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Your Majesty, the Most High God, gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the nations and peoples of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. Those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when... Uh, this, when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from people and given in the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign, to over all kingdoms on earth and sets over them anyone he wishes. But you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself, though you are, though you knew all of this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You have the goblets from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles, your wives and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life in all your ways. Therefore he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parshin. Here is what the words mean. Mene. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been waited on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your king is divided and given to Medes and to the Medes and Persians. At the Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaiming the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at age of 62. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, as we uh, come to you, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, bring to us your message this morning. We pray, Lord, that we will understand, uh, Lord, that we will uh, uh, be glad in the freedom that we have to worship you. 
And we pray that in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I took this, this passage a little longer, but it's a very wonderful story that talks about a kingdom that was corrupt and, and, and fell from inside out today to uh, make us remember a little bit of the condition of, condition of those who do not honor God. Uh, Memorial Day is a time each year when we pause to remember those who laid down their lives for a family, for, for friends, and for the freedom that we enjoy here. Uh, one week after Pearl Harbor attack, President uh, Franklin Roosevelt said, those who long enjoy such privileges that we enjoy forget in time that others have died to win them. Freedom, freedom is not really free, we know that. It is almost always bought with the, the blood of patriots, those who go to the front and fight. The biggest battle we as Americans are facing today is the, bat the battle for the very soul of our nation. The biggest battle that we as Christians are facing today is the battle of the very soul of our obedience and fellowship with God. And we see it all around us every day. The erosion of our society has been a slow process through the years and decades. The position we are in today is because we have uh, tolerated the yesterday. And the position will be in tomorrow will be because of what we tolerated today. Well, history has a way of repeating itself down through the centuries. In Daniel's day, he saw a lot of what we are seeing today. But his situation was much worse. Well, the fifth chapter of Daniel describes the collapse of a culture. We know that uh, King Belshazzar... Uh, asks uh, his servants to bring all the utensils from the temple that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, his father, the previous king, uh, brought from the temple in, in, in Jerusalem. And they made a party and they drank out of the utensils from the house of God. So they had no respect for the utensils from the house of God. And of course, uh, God was not happy, was not okay with that. And he, I, the word of God says, scriptures tells us that a hand rolled in blood. Three words in the wall, which makes uh, uh, Belshazzar very nervous. And, and he asks his uh, uh, diviners and enchanters to come over and, and, and uh, interpret what was written there. And they were not able to do it. And then his uh, wife, the, the queen, uh, comes, comes into the scene and, and she says, well, there is a man uh, that your father brought in from Jerusalem. He is known to interpret everything. So Daniel is brought into the scene and he gives the, uh, the king a preaching <laughs> and then he interprets his ruin. And we, we know that. So the, the nation there, uh, they became so comfortable and, and secure within the confines of their strong walls, but they crumbled from within Babylon. The way I see it, Babylon made four huge mistakes that I would like to call this today, if we can just forward this um, here, the, uh, we call it the uh, freedom dangers the freedom dangers so the first freedom dangers is uh, losing all sense of remembrance that's very dangerous when you forget your past and you don't pay attention what was back then and your blessings and you cannot see what's going on today Belshazzar had forgotten some of the valuable lessons from the past his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, had pulled uh, things together and led the nation into spiritual prosperity. But they forgot all about that. They had forgotten. Lessons like it's written in Daniel 4.37. Those who walk in pride, he's able to put down. In most cases, pride always comes 
before destructions. That's what history tells us. Daniel, Daniel gives us an important insight when he challenges the king with the accusation when he says, you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. That's what Belshazzar was doing, boasting about himself. He said in Daniel 4.30, It is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. Pride always leads to a fall. It's right up there at the top of the list of those things that the Lord, that God despises. Uh, if you don't want to take my word for it, just ask Satan, Adam and Eve and King David, Simon, Peter, all those who uh, disobeyed God. They, they had to learn some lesson. Daniel 4.37 says, those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Well, our country, America, um, uh, used to honor God much more in the recent past. We know that, you know, uh, we, we, we know that, that this happens. It, it, it's etched in numerous monuments all over the nation's capital. It is carved in granite in, in many of the government buildings that we hold dear. Uh, it's printed in, on our currency. There was a time when we credited him with our blessings and our successes and turned to him in our trial and our losses. But today, like Babylon, looks like the sense of remembrance, remembrance is faulty in our days. Uh, President Woodrow Wilson said the best. He said, a nation that does not remember what was yesterday does not know what is today or what it is trying to do. We are about a future thing if you do not know where we came from or what we have been about. In many ways we have forgotten our past. America was settled by men and women who came here primarily looking for God. We know the history. They came search for a home where God could be exalted, worship in the spirit, freedom and in truth. And along the years, we have fallen a long way from we was were. Uh, I wonder about our spiritual lives also as it pertains to our relationship with the Lord. Have we uh, fell into the sense of remembrance as we forget what the Lord has done for us in the past and we do not use those experiences to push us forward in faith? Forgetting his love, deliverances, the victories he gave us in our battles. I pray that we have never forget those. Losing sense of remembrance. Number two, losing all sense of reality. Losing all sense of reality. Daniel chapter 5 verse 1 says, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. It was a party. They were about to get into a war. They're ready to go and leave for another war. But Belshazzar, it's parting. You know, outside the city walls of Babylon, the Medes and the Persians were surrounding the city, but Belshazzar was throwing a party. The Babylonians thought they were invincible, indestructible. Those walls thick stretched for 60 miles in circumference. But everywhere you look at beyond them, you could see the enemy surrounding the city. And King Belshazzar was partying, right? No problem, they thought. So what Belshazzar do? He lost all sense of reality. He threw a big party and invited thousands of guests, you know, with destruction knocking at his door. When we begin to feel secure in our own strength, danger is just on the other side of the wall. Babylon soon fell because they had become corrupt on the inside with no more sense of remembrance or sense of reality. Some people today uh, foolishly think that somehow God needs to put up with my plans and God needs to put up with my life on this earth. But I believe God is saying to us today, let him who thinks he stands Take the heed lest he also fall. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Let him who thinks he stands, take heed lest he also fall. Like those in ancient Babylon, we too think that 
we are invincible. I think that now more than ever it's time for us to remember who we are and where we came from. It is time for us to look at the reality of what's going on around us and truly pray, God forgive us. God bless our families. God bless our nation. So we don't lose a sense of me, so we don't lose a sense of reality. What is the reality going on uh, nowadays with our faith, with our nation, inside our church, inside our lives, inside of our community? We cannot lose the sense of reality. And Belshazzar, he lost the sense of reality. He was uh, up to going to a war and he's partying. Are we partying in our Christian lives, in our relationship with the Lord? Are you partying? I pray not. The, the, the third important uh, freedom danger is losing our sense of restraint. Daniel 5, 2 reads, While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar his father had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wife and his concubines might drink from them. them. Sense of restraint. Restraint meaning having an idea what to do and what not to do. Knowing how far you could go and where and when to stop. When a nation or an individual loses uh, the sense of remembrance, the reality, they also lose the sense of restraining, restraining because they have no reference. Uh, the Babylonians were too blind to see any connection between moral decay and national decline. The king asked to bring the sacred utensils from uh, the house of the Lord from the temple that were used for sacred purposes. And they were using them in a, his private immoral party, even with concubines. Today, various forms of perversion bombard our society through movies, through television, to media, through the internet. Men have stopped leading their families in spiritual and moral development. And this is very sad. The male and female role models are no longer prominent in the home. Children are developing identity problems of their own. Many of them are neglected and for the most part indisciplined. Most like the Babylons, we have lost the sense of restraint. We don't know where to stop. We need to know where to stop and go back to the basis, the basis of our faith, our families, our responsibility with our great commission of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, in the lost world. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are set apart for this purpose and this purpose only. Let us not use the sacred holy temple of God, our bodies, in parties that bring shame to the gospel, like Belshazzar using the sacred to satisfy the immoral. Let us not lose the sense of the restraint. Stop where you must. Also, the other freedom danger is losing our sense of respect. Losing our sense of respect. Daniel chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 said, So they bought in the gold goblets they had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wife and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron, wood and stone. Here we see the crumbling culture of Babylon. Nothing was sacred to them anymore. They had abandoned all absolutes. There were no restraints. There is no respect for anything that is sacred there uh, in the palace of Belshazzar. It was party time in Babylon. Then, then an amaz amazing thing happens. Daniel 5, 5, the word of God says, The fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall. The king quickly sobered up. Yeah, he got smart. What's this? Right? Daniel 5, said, 5 verse 7 says, His knees knocked against each other. 
and he fell on his senses quickly. Into the party hall comes Daniel. After called, right? You know that Daniel comes in. He is not at the party. And as Daniel looked around, shouting and drinking, provision had come to a stop. A strange silence filled that banquet hall. People look as they were like frozen in time or so. The sacred utensils from the temple were scattered around the tables everywhere. Being Daniel calmly did whatever preacher should do. He took God's word and without fear or favor simply revealed to them what God said. Before he interpreted the handwriting on the wall, he preached a sermon to Belshazzar with a three points. It was a three-point sermon. First was a word about power. Daniel reminded Belshazzar that King Nebuchadnezzar's power came from God. Second, there was a word about pride. Daniel reminded the king that Nebuchadnezzar lost his kingdom because of pride. Third, there was a word about punishment in Daniel 5.21. King Nebuchadnezzar was punished until he came to realize what happened in Daniel 4.32 that says, The Most High rules in the kingdom of man and gives it to whomever he chooses. And the next, after preaching him the three-point sermon, he applies the text. Daniel 5.22 says, You have not humbled yourself, although you knew all of this. You have not humbled yourself, although you knew all of this. Are we not humbling ourselves, although we know all of this that's going on around us? Are, are we not humbling ourselves to the Lord? He said, King Belshazzar, you knew about the power, the pride, and the punishment, but sadly you lost all sense of remembrance, reality, restraint, and respect. Like Babylon, our problems are not primarily political economic, or even social. The decline of any person or a nation is stemmed from spiritual factors. Everything else is symptomatic. Back to the banquet. The hall is silent. Daniel now reveals the handwriting in the wall. He says, Mene, Mene, Uparshim, Tekel Uparshim. These words reveal the three elements involved in the sinner's destruction. Mene, numbered. Your days are numbered. Judgment is coming, king. That, that's what uh, Daniel told Belshazzar. Two, Tekel, waited. You have been waited and you came short. Three, Uparshim. Mean separated, you will be separated from God for eternity. Chapter 5 ends like this Daniel 5 30 and 31. That very night Belshazzar was slain, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That very night, the prophecy, whatever was written, like we just read, the words that was plastered in that wall came into a reality that very night. The armies of the Medes and the Persians diverted the Euphrates River, they got into the swamp land and marched right into the city through the dry river bed that ran under the city walls and took the city. God's judgment is certain. There is not a wall high enough or thick enough to prevent a person or a nation from falling when God writes Mene Tekel Upershin on the wall. Who knows how close we might be until our numbers being called. One thing we can know for sure is which side will be on when the Lord separates sheep from the goats. Very few nations, very few nations have a history like America, like our nations. When tomorrow will be the Memorial Day for those who gave their lives for the freedom we enjoy. Land of freedom brought by the forefathers and the veterans. We often hear people say, 
God is our only hope. But I wonder if God might not be our biggest threat if we do not obey and we do not recognize and we are not aware of those dangers that we just shared here. What is about America that offers the exemption that near Babylon or Israel were given? There is a last night for every nation and every individual. And what we forfeit, what a nation forfeit, what an individual forfeit without Christ. Jesus Christ is our only hope. You know, the days of this world are numbered. One day Jesus Christ will return and Jesus came to give us freedom so we can live freely in Him. We need to have a sense of urgency and realize the righteousness of Christ through the new birth that is only offered through salvation in His name and in His person. This Memorial Day we need to remember Daniel 4.32 The Most High he still rules over the affairs of man. The Most High he still rules over the affairs of man. And may we humble ourselves before Him. And may God bless us. May God bless America. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray this morning that you give us a sense of remembrance, Lord, that we never forget our past. Lord, that you give us a sense of reality so we can identify the days we're living in. Lord, that you give us a sense of restraint so we know what to do, what not to do, when to start and when to stop. And Lord, that you gave us a sense of respect so we can revere you and your name. Lord, may we value the freedom that we have in Christ and never forget it as the Babylonians did. We praise your name for the veterans that paid our freedom with their lives. We remember them and we honor Jesus who gave, us, who gave his life for our freedom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ. May we continue to pursue this and live a life that glorify your name. And we thank you, Lord. And you praise your name today in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Oh, may God bless you. I hope the words of the scriptures today and this history of how Babylon fell may bring a deep insight into your spiritual life that you will have all those senses and evaluate your life and pray yourself with God and He will bring you up today. And... Happy Memorial Day. Uh, we, we live in a freedom, in a, in a, in a nation that is free. Uh, we praise God and we, 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 thank for, we thank our veterans that gave their lives too for, for the freedom that we have. Okay, may God bless you. And as we normally say, go with God. We say in this pandemic times, stay with God. May God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen.